Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Matt's back with us today, and we've got something a little bit different. So, the Volvo 940's MOT is due, I think it's a few months, April, mid-April, um, but we want to get ahead on the game. We also need to move the 340, which is currently enjoying some sunlight, first time in 25 years, <laughs> um, and we need to move some cars about. We've got projects coming in. Matt's got an old project coming. We've got, we need it to be a usable car. So we've got some work to do on this car, but before then, we're gonna do top tips for checking out your car for an MOT. Loads of people have kind of, there's, there's legalities on cars that people don't know about, there's things that you need to do for an MOT, there's things that a lot of people do that you don't need to do for an MOT. So we're gonna try and cover everything that is basics really, aren't we? Yeah. Without taking a car off the ground so you can do it at home. Um, but Matt's got a bit more experience in this than me, so I'm gonna let Matt lead the way with this. So over to you, what, okay. what's the first bit to look at? Well, this is all about trying to save you guys a little bit of money on the MOT. So the last thing you want when you send your car for an MOT is for it to fail or get advisories because then someone can look on the database and yeah. see what's happened to that car in the past. So yeah. all you really want is a, a green ticket and away you go. Yeah, because let's face it, whenever we look at a car to buy, like we're looking at cars to keep rotating in here, yeah. the first thing you do is right, let's do a reg check. Yeah. And if you go, oh, it's failed for brakes, failed for, but that not necessarily is a bad thing because depending on the owner, they've done the work on it That's and it's it. passed the MOT the next time, but you yeah. want to know. And I want to have green tickets on mine. Yeah, you want to avoid the disappointment yeah. of failure and have to go back home, fix it, and then come back again and things like that. So yeah. it's all cost and time. Yeah, an about. MOT at the current price is just under £60. A garage can charge a maximum of just under £60. That's quite a bit of money. I mean, mm. for the American guys, that's like, 12 cheeseburgers. Yeah. So yeah. that's quite a lot of money. Yeah. So with extra fries. With extra fries, yeah. yeah. So yeah. you don't want that disappointment. So what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna do like a pre-MOT check that anybody can do. And it's the MOT is it's a safety inspection. It's not a service. No. A service implies that you change parts, replace, repair. Filters, fluids and stuff. Filters yeah. and fluids. You're not paying for that. The MOTs are literally just a safety inspection. Yeah. Is your car road legal and compliant for UK roads That's basically, it. isn't it? That's kind That's of what it. they, they go a down. Truck, a car, a bike. Yeah. And then rules, obviously we're doing it for a car, That some of them change, don't they, for trucks? Some of them change, and yep. Stuff. And even for uh, private hire vehicles, such yes. as taxis, they get tested every six months yeah. and come under because different they're, regulations. Yeah, because they're carrying people, aren't they? Stuff That's it, so yeah. Sweet, right, I'm going to hand over to Matt. So I'll film Matt doing this. Crack on, Matt, where are we going to start? I'm going to start by asking ourselves, <laughs> when was this car last serviced? And when was the cam belt done? <laughs> cam belt was done, actually, the cam belt was done when the head went on. So the cam belt was done a few years ago. Yeah. Um, so it's well within its mileage. It's done about 12,000 miles. Yeah. Service is being done today after this video. That's it. <laughs> so it's done 8,000 miles on its current oil. Yeah. So we need to know that because if the car, like the engine of a cam belt snaps on the MOT, Again, game over. So you need to make yeah. sure that your car's actually in good running condition before you even send it. Before it, it can be tested. So this, we're going to start now by going on the inside. Keys in it? Yeah. Okay. So the first thing I'm looking for is I'm going to turn the ignition on. We're going to turn the wipers off. <laughs> they work. They work. And I'm looking for all the dash lights. All the dash lights illuminate. I'm going to make sure it's out of gear. I'm going to start it up. I want to make sure that all the lights, emergency lights go out. So there's no brake warning lights, there's no engine warning light, things like that. There is a light on for the washer fluid level. We're not too fussed about that because as long as the washers work and it clears the windscreen, yeah. the wipers clear the windscreen, that's perfectly fine. The dash illumination works. Again, that's fine. While we're here, we can check our indicators that they work. The hazards, we can check, but not strictly part of the test though. Is um, that, just to clarify that, is that because some cars don't have hazards? Like the 72 Mini doesn't have hazards, so it's right. not strictly part. Okay. Well, a lot of these things, the regulations do change and have changed over time. Mm -hmm. They like to update things. So my advice is, I'll say this again at the end, but go, we'll leave a link even to .gov yes, and all yeah. the, the MOT regulations are on there. So well, again, while we're here, check that the main beam warning works and that illuminates. Yep. We can check that the fog light uh, light works as well, but yep. if you've got a fog light, that Yeah, so the Volvo is a very, very tiny little light on the top, but yep. it is working on there. So, turn it off again, turn the lights off. Okay, home. 
That work? That arm works. Okay, so, while we're here, I can check my mirrors. They secure some visors that they come down. Yep. And that they go up and stay up. Yeah, so they're not obstructing your view. They're not obstructing your view. There's no cracks in the windscreen. There's no chips in the swept area of the windscreen. If you've got a big crack or a chip about the size of a 10 pence piece, it needs to be replaced. Yeah. Um, these are all regulations for this country as well. Um, heaters and blowers, the demist isn't part of the MOT. You just gotta make sure that the window is actually clear. Um, okay, right. So moving on to the next bit. While we're here, I'm gonna check the driver's seatbelt. So seatbelt, the buckle's there. We'll give it a quick tug in there, make sure that's secure. We'll pull out the seatbelt webbing and we're just checking the webbing, see if it's got checking, any- Checking for damage and that. Checking for damage, any rips, any frays, things like that. While it's at this point, give it a tug, make yep. sure it locks. Seatbelt itself, I'm gonna just whip around the other side. Yep, okay. coming in. So to check the seatbelt, yep. we're gonna get the clip, put it into the seatbelt, yep. pull tightly yeah. and press the red button and it should release because you need to put tension on it. If you have an accident yeah. and the, seat, the seat belt's under tension, it still needs to be able to release. Yeah. And, and also same. it's one of the things where it needs to release is like emergency services getting you out That's of it, jamming it. and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. So we need to make sure the buckle is secure yep. and it's not broken yep. or anything like that. So mine are discolored because the car's old, but there's no cracks or damage cool. and stuff like that. So. The seat, make sure the seat is secure, yep. things like that. Okay, steering wheel. Make sure the steering wheel yep. hasn't got any movement in it. It's not about to fall off. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so moving on, I'm just gonna walk around the outside of the car now. Yep. And we're gonna check things for damage, um, sharp objects and things like that. So wing mirrors, the glass, that the glass is in good condition, it's not cracked and it's present. Yep. Wipers, quick the wiper. Make sure it's not falling off. The actual blade itself is in good condition. It is because it clears the windscreen. Yeah, we're just going to check that, didn't we? Yep. <clears throat> uh, Pony pull is... Driver's side. side. Yep. We'll check that in a second. So it's going to walk around again. Make sure the wipers are all right. They're not falling off. They're okay. nice and new, I will add. They're add. nice and new. <laughs> nice and classy to side. Again, mirror's okay. Yep. This is there. Um, I think the regulations have just changed recently for the rear view mirror. Right. And for newer cars, it has to be present. On older cars, I don't think you actually need a rear view mirror. You just have to have two rear facing mirrors. Yes. Um, unless you've got a bulkhead, a van. Yeah. Something like that. So, again, yeah, passenger seatbelt. Pull all the webbing out. Check the condition. It's all fine. Give it a pull. Inside. Clips in, pulls out. Seat's fine. Okay. There's nothing else in there. That's it. Same with the back. So that's one thing to note, like how you've left this one. When you pick your car up from MOT, people always go, oh, well, my seatbelt's like this. The amount of people that it's because they've done this safety check, isn't that's it? it? So um, while we're in the passenger the compartment, yeah. items in driver's view. Yeah, so we did point this out. These, are they technically a fail? Can be. If they're too low yes. in your driver's vision. So yeah. things like air fresheners, sat, sat nav holders, phone holders, be wary guys because yeah. they can take fail. Take them out. Yeah. Take them out before you take it. Again, it's just one of those little things that can catch you out. Yeah. So. I, I, in the past, have had a car fail for a sat nav holder in the line of vision. So yeah. I have genuinely been there and it failed and it was frustrating. And it's so annoying when that yeah. happens. It's just so much wasting time and things like that, but it does happen, so. Yeah. Yeah, so these are little things. <laughs> so into the back. Bit short and light in here. Yeah. Dark. And then check the seatbelts. You can see how fast I'm actually going through this. Yeah. Because MOT testers generally I knock only them have, in and out, don't they? Yeah. They have an hour. They're on the clock, aren't they? Yeah, they're on a the clock. So these guys want to do this quickly. Yep. There we go. Okay. Seats in good condition. Yeah. Fine, not fine. To be fair, the back of that car's mint. <laughs> Fuel cap. Get the keys. Fuel cap. Fuel cap. So we'll do it. Get it off. There we go. Okay, so want well, to make sure the seal inside that fuel cap is there mm -hmm. and it's not perished. Yep. It's fine. That looks fine to me. So stick it back on again. 
Again, safety aspect, isn't it? Fuel vapors, fuel leakage, and stuff like that. Um, Later cars like that's got a splashback, so in theory you shouldn't get that, shouldn't you? Yes, it still needs to seal, and on newer cars as well with like evaporative emission control things and yeah. things like that. Yeah. It goes in and it yep. locks as well. Okay. Right. Rear the vehicle. Doesn't really matter about rear view, things mm -hmm. like that. Tailgate. There we go. No, that's great because the struts come up. Yep. The tailgate stays up. Doesn't bash you in the head. It doesn't fall down and knock in your head. Yep. Again, that can be a fail if your gas struts don't work or anything yep. like that. There's nothing actually really in the rear of the vehicle we need to check. However, it is good practice to make sure your car is clean inside and out because yep. the tester's got to get in there and check all this stuff. Mm. Um, things like baby seats as well. Um, it's Generally, it's a better idea to take them out um, before you take it for a test. Um, these, because everything's covered in carpet and things like that in the cars, there's nothing you can really check. Yeah. Not much you can check in the back, as far as I've seen anyway. So, yeah, that's fine. Okay, let's Okay, so first thing is, where is the clip? For what? Where is the buckle? Oh, well, there you go. My buckle is uh, underneath this seat. So yeah, there you go, straight away. Because I use this as an estate car, the light's not very good in there, but my buckle was stuck under the seat. There you go. Is that technically a failure? No. But it's there, it's working. Do, yeah. Just, just they do, do the same what I've just did. done, yeah. yeah. But it's just something to, again, yeah. to just check. It saves a lot of time, things like that. It just shows how much I don't use the back of this car. <laughs> it literally gets used as a van if it gets used, so. Back seats, same yeah. as the front seats. You've got to make sure that the lock into position are secure. We mm. had a few where I've seen that they don't, and yeah. the seat just flies forward and it doesn't lock in. So that's just it's a Volvo, thing. very big on safety, aren't we? Yeah, <laughs> yeah Volvo's have been. Um, right, so, on to the next bit. And you just sat in the car and we'll check the lights. Sweet. What's that camera? Okay. Okay, side lights. Dip beam. Main beam. Near side indicator. Okay, offside. Okay, right, go around to the back. Inside, yep, yeah. offside. Okay, brake. Put ignition on. Brake. There we go. <laughs> I'm worried then. Uh, fog light. Fog light, very good. Uh, reverse, isn't technically part of the test, but we'll check it while we're here. No reverse lights. They flash. Nope, no reverse lights. They do, they, they do work. Yeah, flash. nothing yet. <laughs> <laughs> There's an intermittent fault with them. Yeah, probably just a sort of switch. So while we're here as well, turn all your lights off now, Matt, but the number plate lights do work. There's two lights on this one only one of the light needs to work for it to pass. So 50% of the light output. Okay. Um, but as far as I'm aware anyway, but again, it's just good practice to make sure that all your lights do work. So basically, my reverse lights, when it's in reverse, it's hit or miss, they go on, and yeah. sometimes they flash. There's, Probably there's the switch. switch somewhere. Um, but we have just discussed the gearbox potentially needs to come out, so we can have a look at that switch maybe. On yeah. But they do work, trust, trust me, they do work. They do work. Just so that's pretty much all the stuff that we need to check in this half, on the ground. Of, on the, yeah. ground. Yeah. the rest now, we need to get the car up in the air. Can we do a visual check of tyres, I guess, on the You ground? can do a visual check, yeah. check of tyres. Um, and, and just buy. You can get a torch, you know, look, You right. can, yeah, so we'll probably do that next. We'll continue steering on a walk and um, yeah. do that as well. Sweet. Okay. What have we here next? <laughs> right. Under the bonnet. Under the bonnet. Uh, right. Something to check out with. 
People love the fat, by the way, on this channel. We use microfibers to check oil. <laughs> so, yeah. Shout out to microfiber oil gang. <laughs> there yeah so the level's good just a bit dirty but yeah, we're we'll covering we're covering that today anyway yeah. so uh okay run my torch i'm looking for things that are insecure yep leaking things like that so we'll just grab a quick thing grab some pipes break through though it's a bit hard to see because of the sun yeah but i'm looking for the correct level and things break fluid weeks yeah now if the break fluid is low then it's generally two things. You've either got a leak or your brake pads are that worn that the pistons are fully out mm -hmm. and that's why the level's are. So it's either you might need brake pads changing or you've got a leak. Generally, if you've got a leak, you'll know because you'll see puddles of brake fluid everywhere and the warning light will come on. Um, yeah, just checking for fluid leaks. The steering U-joint is just down there. I don't yeah. know if you can see it. Behind the big turb yeah. So we can get my hand in there. And we'll just give it a bit of a, a bit of a wiggle, and that feels fine. <clears throat> it just seems all right. So you're just That's checking for secure of everything, aren't we? Security. You're checking for levels and things like that. Now, as well, a lot of it, they may check the engine oil just to make sure it's safe to run. Yeah. But they're not going to top anything up. No. Um, they're just making sure they don't do damage to it while testing it exactly. as well, aren't they? Yeah, exactly. That's all it is. But again, these things you should be doing before you take a print test. Yeah. Um, battery condition, make sure that terminals are tight on the battery, they're not going to fall off and that the battery is secure now. <laughs> We've got a few things to sort, yeah. haven't we? That's because it, it broke down and the AA shoved the battery in there. Right. I genuinely am not, it was cable tied in. <laughs> it was. We're trying to do a bit better than the cable ties. But yeah, that needs to be secure. Make sure your headlights... So, so far, what have we got with this one? We've got battery and unsecure. My seatbelt buckle was trapped. Yep. And the reverse got... lights intermittent, but they're not needed for an MOT That's anyway, right. are they? And you need to take your air fresheners off. And the air fresheners. So we're not doing too bad. Doing we haven't too got bad. some mechanical stuff yet, but yeah, yeah it's like. Uh, wiring, make sure nothing's chafing. Yep. Um, yeah, I'll just look at the fuel. So you've got a fuel pipe just here, yep. which isn't in its clip. Oh yeah, it's just come out, hasn't yep. it? Yeah. So we'll sort that out later, yep. but that needs to be put back in. Uh, so I've got things down there. Yeah, it's actually just come out of its plastic hanger there. Yeah, it? that's all. I think everything looks okay. Right. Good. Okay. Put it down? Uh, just put it down, just put it on its latch. Right, so I'm just going to start it up and yep. turn the steering just on a lock. Right, yeah. So, signs of like a, a damaged steering rack or a faulty pump or something like that. Let it turn smoothly. Are we good? We're good. It's got pretty lot there, so we can check out that. They're pretty good to me. They look pretty good. <laughs> so, check the page, it's just got one just here. I did clean her before this video, but yeah, it's not, not very good, is it? So, this is a Tire tread depth gauge and really cheap to buy, aren't they? Very, really, really yeah. cheap to buy. Because save you, I mean, you should be checking the tires anyway. Yeah. Really. But always does. Put a pin and you stick it in there. Six. Six mil, we're on. So um, no, most new tires are between eight and seven mil, aren't they? Yeah. So. Yeah. And we're looking for the tread is evenly warm and you need three quarters of the tread available so you could actually probably have maybe that much bald yeah that much still going and it's probably still past and it'll be an advisory for it'll the rest be an of the advisory. Yeah. however I really just don't, just don't, don't advise do that. that no make sure your tires are in good condition all the way across um yeah so also apart from that we're just looking while we're here while well, we're not jacked it up but i'm looking underneath that suspension and nothing is coil bound or rusty or snapped and things like that 
we can check it a bit more when it's jacked up. Yeah. If you've got the facility at home to jack it up, great. Yeah. Um, and you can check underneath as well. Again, we're just going around things at the moment where you don't need any tools really. Apart yeah, from basic the light. checks, aren't they? Basic yeah. checks to do. Right, we'll do the other side. Yeah, the tyre should be all right, really. Yeah. So again, we're just going to look round as much as we can around the back. And I can also see around the back as well, with suspension components and things like that, brake lines. Now, I'm going to get in there, you can see oh, yeah. that brake line. It's looking a little bit cracked on that brake pipe, just near the front. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But it's not leaking, but we'll check it out a bit closer in later. We're doing some work to this car today anyway, guys, so anything we notice, we can we can sort. We can sort. So. Obviously, back. On the tyre as well, we're also checking on the outside of the tyre that there's no bulges, there's no rips, you can't see any cord, things like that. When the tyre tread starts wearing and it gets really thin, you come to the point where cords will start showing, that'll fail. Yep. So, the yeah, tyre is really probably one of the most important things when it comes to any vehicle because it's the only thing that's connecting you to the road. Yep. So yeah, that's just an important one. It's also important to see that the tyre size there, 205, 55, 16, got to be the same on one side as it is on the other side. Yes, yeah. On the axle they need on to the match, axle, don't they? It's got to match yeah. on the same axle. Doesn't matter front to back, because some cars do have bigger wheels on the back than they do on the front. So as long as they're the same both sides, doesn't matter about the type, yeah. what they are, but it's got to be the same same size. Yeah. Well we can just a quick look at the pads. I don't think they're a bit difficult to see now, but you can just about see them. See if we can get in there with that. Yeah. Right in there. Yeah, and the brake disc looks pretty decent the as well. Look, There's yeah. no big ridge on it. Yeah, nope. the pads have got plenty of life in there. Order them. So. Yeah, we're looking okay. Right, we'll just do the other side. I'll check the rear wiper. That one's, rear wiper. that one's nice and new as well. Good. Again, we're looking all right with no, with no bulges. The valve stem as well looks good in good condition. It's not torn, it's not perish and things like that. We can check the depth on these quite easily and I can see straight away that there's loads of tread on yeah. these tyres anyway. But we're going to take these wheels off anyway for the service side of things I think. Yeah. Um, okay. Right. So. I'm just going to walk down here. I can see. Come round the back of me. I can see a trap with them there. Yep. And I can see the drop winks. Now, yep. those drop winks looking a little bit perished. Yep. Could have done with a set of them. Could have done with a set of them. But they're not, you know, they're not, there's no play in them. No. Things like that. There's no play in the actual anti roll bar bushing U bush just there to the right. Yep. So there's no movement in there. And this is with the car. Yeah, we haven't jacked this up as well. It's sat on the floor, yeah. You're actually going to be able to see play better in the anti-roll bar when yeah. it's sat on the floor. Yeah. Uh, just, well, better when the wheels are straighter, but I'm going to try and hold the camera. If you start it up and yep. shake the steering for me. Perfect. I'll try and get set up there. Right. Shake steering. Okay. Keep shaking it. Okay, turn it off. Now I'm not sure if the camera picked that up, but I can actually see and feel a little bit of play in that track red end. Yeah. And so that was an advisory last year on yep. this MOT and we've got a new set to go on. It's one of the jobs. That's one of the jobs we've been so today. It was this one that got picked up. That one hasn't got play, but this one has, but we just changed the pair. Yep. It's a nice they're not too difficult to do on most cars. Um we could also fire if not. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Um, you can also see that the steering rack gator is in good condition. There's no leaks or tears and things like that in it. Suspension bushes, a little bit harder to see again while it's on the ground, but they're not in too bad condition overall. And we'll do the same on the other side. Yeah, if you want to turn the steering again, and we'll just... Oh, 
Okay, opposite lock. Any more? Is that full lock? Okay, check steering. Okay, turn it off. Okay. So I can see, I can't see any bulges in the tyre or rips or tears. That trap would end, I couldn't feel any play in it at all. Um, the pin is still in the bottom there. For the shock and nut, bushes on here, again, perish but not too worn. And the bush for the uh, anti roll bar as well, it looks okay. Can't see really any damage to these brake lines or the any other parts of the steering or suspension. Yeah, well, pretty good there. No leaks in the shockers. So I think I think one thing to add as well while Matt's wandering around is, it, I get if it's just your run-of-the-mill car, but it pays to know your car. It doesn't does. It? it really does pay to know, like, and take take advice from the MOT man. They're not having to go at you when they say get this done. You know, really keep an eye on that. You get good ones and bad MOT testers. Some of more kinds of classics and others yeah, and stuff. Yeah. But it, it just pays to know it, doesn't it? Do your regular checks, check your oil, check your lights. Like for me, I don't know about Matt, I check my oil and fluids pretty much most of the times I go out in that car, and that's probably overkill. But I know this car does have a slight oil leak. And I know that before I bought it, it had overheating faults. So I'm always checking that. Yeah. Same with the minis when you go on long trips. Tires, it's part of my job to check customers' cars and tires. Mm. It's just drilled into me. Tires and brakes is safety. It is. And it does pay, doesn't it, to, it does. to it, check on it this. It pays you back in... Your life. In your life, yeah, it really <laughs> does, and others as well. So this is why the government, the, the Ministry of Testing brought this in, or the, the, the Ministry of Testing, it's the Ministry of Transport. Yeah. That's not somewhere where Harry Potter takes his broom for a service. <laughs> that's... No, it's where we take our Swedish that's, bricks. That's it. So <laughs> it's, it's a safety aspect, yeah. and they brought it in in the 60s because cars were... There was more and more cars coming onto the road. They were dangerous. They were, they were dangerous. And again, the regulations do change, but currently, as far as I'm aware, that any new car has got to be over three years old before it has its first MOT. Yeah, they are actually looking to change They're that again, which, are, change which both of us I don't think we agree with at no, all. I no. work on new cars for a living, and let's put it this way, I see cars at six months old that are illegal and yeah. stuff like that, and I don't think it's a good idea at all. I've seen the same. Like, personal I, preference. Yeah, when I used to work for an in a motor trade, then yeah, we did see vehicles that are done not even 30,000 miles, mm. and they need tyres, Suspension and it all goes down as well to how you drive the car mileage the yeah. condition of the roads as well Yeah, I think that's a big factor. We can maybe have a video on this We probably could yeah, we can have a video on <laughs> we'll this. Yeah, if you're interested in that drop in the comments below because we can have a conversation about <laughs> The rules that are coming in do we agree with them and also road conditions? It's all well and good in our eyes and we won't touch them too much, mm. but but they charge us for a test every year Yep, but I don't feel the roads get any better, but we're paying for more things that are wear and tear on our car that are getting damaged yep. because of roads. Yep. Not necessarily our driving, some people drive like idiots, yep. but it is also, that's, that's another, yeah, 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 well, do you have a chat so about that? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> let's, let's carry on with the MOT yep. side of things. So, right, MOT. So, yeah, we can probably just turn the steering again back to the other side and we'll check the brake lines on the other side again. Yeah. Um, really to the backs, we can't really see much on the back without no. jacking it up and, and having a good look. But we've already done now a lot of the MOT yeah. that we can do with the car sat on the floor. Mm -hmm. Now, we're not going to be able to check for brake efficiency. Brake efficiency, because we don't have the tools to do that. Or the emissions. Or the emissions. Now, the emissions, again, um, on your older cars, your yeah, classics and things like that, uh, with the car better and you've got no catalytic converter, depending on the age of the car, you might not even have to get tested. No. Uh, some of them still do. A lot of the time, it's just a smoke test. And it's the same when, even when you've got a petrol or a diesel car, before you take the test, get that car hot. Mm. Especially if it's got a catalytic converter. Yeah. Petrol or diesel, again, you've got to make sure that engine is really, really hot to get it there because otherwise the test is going to be sat there with it on getting high up res, to temperature, getting yeah. up to temperature. Yeah. Um, and it's just going to take a bit more time to actually do. So, um, yeah, take for a good 20 minute, half an hour run before you take it for a test, if you can. Yeah. If you can. Um, right, so what that, is left? So That's everything on ground really, isn't it? everything on ground. Um, common 
uh, things that people fail on are items in driver's view, lights, washers, tyres, probably, they basic, probably the they? most common things that you can check yourself to avoid disappointment and save money. <laughs> so yeah, is that everything? I mm -hmm. think that's everything we can do on the floor. Yeah. Oh, no. Registration plates. Yes. Registration so plates. my registration plates, show plates, um, they are fully reflective, correct UK font, but they do not have the markings on them. What is it? What is it? It, need, it needs a certain them, standard, doesn't it? Really? The garage of where they are, the, the supplier of... Yeah, and it should have like a... I, is it... How many number is on it? You should have... It used to be the EU symbol, uh, now it's the UK symbol, yes. things like that, so... Yeah. You're supposed to have that as well. But you generally do have to have the manufacturer of the plate. Yeah, because they they are the ones that prove they are compliant with the law, basically, right. aren't they? The people you have them made by. So yeah. mine are compliant with the law, they just hasn't got anything written on it to say it's compliant with the law. Yeah, they've got to be the right size, the right letter spacing, things yeah. like that reflected back. Yeah, in. because people that do their private plates and space stuff out, that is actually technically illegal, isn't it? And yeah, it can you, be. You, you can get fined by the police and it's an MOT fail, isn't it? It is. Um, you'd be surprised at what you can actually get fined for and points for yeah. as well. I yeah. mean, I think it's six points, I can mean, it's three points or six three, points per tire. Three points per tire, I think, per yeah. Tire. Uh, so, so, so therefore, what Matthew said then, if all four of your tyres are below the legal limit, yep. it's game over. It's game over. So this is why we're trying to make this video. It's not to tell you, teach you to suck eggs. It's just to help you. We yep. do this, you do this. It's, yeah. So there's a few things I need to sort of mine, technically, yeah. that we will sort it, like my battery tie down, um, my number plates technically aren't legal and stuff like that. So just it's worth guys doing as this, well for it? who have a historic vehicle, Yes. That is MOT exempt. Now, you might think, oh great, my car's MOT exempt, so I don't need to take it for a test. You still gotta look after it, you still gotta make sure yeah. it's roadworthy. Because if you get pulled and things aren't compliant, yeah. you can lose your car, you can get points. You can. You know, it's stuff like that. Big, big thing about that is R72 estate, that hasn't been for an MOT, I think for 14 or 16, it's well over, well getting off two years, mm -hmm. so I had an MOT in a garage. But you see what we do on this channel, the tyres are all legal, all the brakes work, everything gets regularly adjusted, it is looked after, there is every, everything on that vehicle works as it should, yeah. there's nothing structurally damaging or dangerous about it, I wouldn't drive a car that's dangerous, I wouldn't let my wife drive a car that's dangerous, that's and it. it's, it's a difference between car people, isn't it, and people that just don't care it about is. the law and yeah. the rules, so it's worth thinking about, there's a lot it of food is. for thought in an MOT, isn't there? Yeah, running a car <laughs> can be expensive, but we try and make it so you can do as much work as you can yourself yes. to try and, you know, to enjoy, enjoy motoring. Yeah. So I hope you found this video useful and um, please do take some of the tips. Please comment below. We have, we have probably missed a few things. This is purely an on-ground check, wasn't it? Yeah. This is an on-ground, check your car, try and do some of this regularly to save you having to rush around before your MOT. Yeah. And um, we're going to get the car up in the air now and carry on doing some work with it. Yeah. Um, and if there's anything else that we find, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, yeah, definitely. We'll, we'll let you know. So we're about to drop all four wheels, like Matt said. We're doing quite a bit of suspension work to this car, so some of the stuff we've pointed out. Yeah. So thank you very much for watching. Remember to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Give this video a thumbs up. And like I say, please get into the comments below and chat away about things. We would have missed things. This is, you know, maybe some stuff just for this car that we talked about. Just, yeah. Please yep. be safe on the roads. This is always <laughs> saying it, we see so much every day. So, thank you very much for watching. Remember everything for the sponsors in the link description below. And uh, yeah, if you need bits, especially if you classic mini, you know MOTs coming up, guys. Hit mini mine up for them bits. Catch you next one. We got work to do. Three.